day here on Clay Share Con, day four, and I'm going to be throwing bowls. And um, for today's demo, I'm going to throw a couple bowls for you. I'm going to throw two, as a matter of fact. I'm going to throw one three and a half pound bowl, and then I'm going to throw a larger bowl using two three and a half pound balls of clay that I'm going to stack and throw those to show you how to make larger bowls. Now, a lot of people will reach a point where they can only throw a certain amount of clay. And so the reason we stack it is so we can make bigger pieces and it's a little easier to do it that way. So this is gonna be a really fun tutorial and I'm excited to share that with you and throwing bowls. So this is a three and a half pound bowl right here. It's just a simple little serving bowl that I throw back I was doing production pottery every day and going out to art fairs and farmers markets on the weekends to sell my work, I would make 20 or more of these at a time and they would sell like crazy. I couldn't keep these in stock. This size bowl was the biggest thing apparently to sell and it's actually pretty simple to make. It's easier than a mug because you don't have to attach the handle. And the glazes on this one I'll show it upside down so you can appreciate it all the way around and the inside. So the gray is my Clayscapes Pottery in May. And then the blue is my Lake Blue, which also will be available in May from Clayscapes Pottery. And they love each other. They love to layer over each other. So they work really, really well. All right. So I see some people are terrified of bowls. Don't be scared. I'll help you through this. It'll be all good. Making bowls is really fun. And if you're just starting out throwing, you know, start small. Don't, don't overdo it. Don't try to throw a really big bowl starting out. Just do a pound or two of clay to begin with and then work up by half pound increments. So I'm going to set this, I got to set this on the floor because I don't have a place. <laughs> sad, sad to put that nice bowl on the floor, but I don't have a place up here that I can do it. So I have three balls of clay I've already wedged over here off to the side. And each one of them is three and a half pounds. We'll just grab this one. I keep them wrapped up in plastic after I wedge them out because I don't want my clay to dry out. You know, when we were throwing the cup and I was explaining one of the things that will really help you when you're starting to throw, or even if you've been throwing for a while, is to use clay that is soft. If you use clay that is really hard and you have to fight, it'll hurt your hands and it will be hard to center and hard to work with. Bowls are your fave. You just naturally navigate to them when you first started. Bowls are, um, they're really fun. And what I like about bowls is they're simple. They, they don't have anything other than trimming in the making process. You don't have to add handles to them. And you can use them as glaze tests. They're fabulous for that. And I, I love seeing all the comments. Everybody's really enjoying this Clay Share Con, these demos. This has been a really, fun time, you know, and I think right now we need this. We all need the sharing. We all need this community. And this is one way to make it happen. We have one more day left tomorrow in Clay Share Con. But you know, I always do weekly live broadcasts every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. I have my live at five. And usually on Sundays at noon, I have a kiln opening. Usually twice a month we do that. But I might come to you on Sundays anyhow, just to check in and see how everybody's doing and share what I've been working on that week in the studio. Because I think that staying connected is really important and we really need these connections right now. You, so I see people are having a hard time keeping a round bottom that looks nice. Well, we can talk about that like with the trimming part and everything. So I have my bat on my wheel. I always throw, bat, throw bowls on a bat because here's the thing, you can throw a bowl and wire it off and you can remove it from your wheel head, but in the course of removing it, you're probably gonna warp your bowl. So instead of a beautiful round bowl, you'll get an oval bowl. So I throw them on my bat and then I remove the entire bat and I don't touch the bowl until it's ready to trim. So I leave it alone. All right, so I think we'll switch now to the side view for everybody that's watching. And those of you on Instagram, we're going to stay with the front view because that's all Instagram does. But if you want to see the side view, check out YouTube, the ClayShare Facebook page, ClayShare.com or Vimeo.com. All right. So I've wedged this clay and then I've patted it into a ball and we're just going to throw it down into the center. 
Now I've got, I've got my knee up on, so I told you guys in my other demo, I have my wheel raised up a bit so I can sit nice and straight, keeping my back straight. And also I have my feet up on bricks so that my knees can be up. You want your knees level with your hips if possible. You don't want to be hunched down, but you definitely want to have good posture. Let's make sure my wheel's on and let's go. So I'm going to smack this in. I call this smacking on center. So this does a couple things. It seats the clay on the wheel head and it helps to get it closer to center. And I see some questions again about the green under here. It's called a bat gripper. It's just a little foamy sheet that's in here between the bat and the wheel head that prevents the bat from wobbling. And you can buy them or you can make your own from craft foam or the um, foamy sheets you use for shelf liner. This is three and a half pounds of Laguna B-Mix 5 for those of you who are wondering what clay I'm using. And we're gonna get it wet. And we're gonna go in just like I did with the mug, starting on the side, pushing in with my palm, and then working my way up to cone up, just like that. And then we'll compress down. And you have a bit of wobble, but you just work through that. You don't wanna fight it, but you wanna keep control of it. You wanna work it. And it really doesn't matter how many times you cone up. It's whatever works for you to get the clay centered. Sometimes when I'm throwing, I can put the clay on, smack it to center, and it goes without a hitch, right to center, right? No problem. Sometimes when I'm throwing, I have to fight with it a bit. You know, we all have those days. So with bowls, you will definitely notice if it's not centered pretty easily. So you want to do your best to get it as centered as possible. I see Deborah says she's going to go through withdrawal on Thursday because I won't be live. But I will be doing a live kiln opening on Sunday. Definitely. So I'm going to compress this down to it's a cake, right? Doesn't it look like a cake or a pudding maybe? For those of you in the UK, a pudding. Like sticky toffee pudding maybe? Some people call it a beehive. So we have it centered and one thing to remember when you're making bowls is this diameter here, your base is not going to be any wider than this. So if you want a really wide bowl, at this point, you're not going to get a wide based bowl. You can have a wider rim, but your base is going to be about this wide. So let's find our center. Just going to let my thumb ride along here. And I'm just going to press down, like my thumb is a button. Press down with my index finger. And that finds the center for me. And I love that you are all sharing your tips on things that help you to make it easier when you're throwing. I see some people find wedging a lot. Wedging definitely helps soften up the clay. So this is a bowl. And when you think about a bowl bottom, you, you usually want a slope, right? We want a little sloping bottom. You can do a flat bottom bowl if you want to, but I like to have a slight slope. It doesn't have to be a big slope, but just a little bit. So I see Paul says, find it hard to get to the material of the bottom edge. Down here, right here, at this point. So, you know, when I'm centering, and I'll use the fingers of my left hand to really help. So right here, it's really catching that material. So let's open it up. Go slow, don't rush. Sometimes a little ribbon of clay will come off your fingers when you're doing that, like this. You just reach in and grab it. Now this has a, I have a very thick bottom bowl. I'm gonna have a nice raised foot, about mm, a little more than a quarter of an inch, closer to half an inch. We say three eighths of an inch. 
And so I'm compressing, and as I compress, I'm compressing at a bit of an angle, so we have that slope continuing. And I do have hand building bowl classes and other ways of making bowls if you don't have a pottery wheel. There's many options out there for making bowls. There's many types of bowls. And lots of people make them just from coiling. GR pottery forms, those make great bowls. So now we're gonna start, we're gonna pull up and I'm just gonna pull straight up. So let's think about this shape. When we're gonna pull up, if I pull straight up, what naturally will happen is the clay will actually, through centrifugal force, <laughs> centrifugal force, be thrown out a little bit. It'll be, it'll go more of a cone. And I wanna keep it straight up and down for a bit. So as I'm pulling up, I'm actually gonna be pushing a little towards the inside. So let's go ahead and do this. And the wheels, I've slowed it down. And with bowls, as you get bigger, you'll wanna go slower. So we pull our first pull, compress. So after I throw, do I cover the rims and then add plastic for the entire pot? So what I do is I will let it sit, usually for the rest of the day, and then in the evening I cover the entire pot. And then when I come out the next day, I will actually flip it over and the bottom will be exposed. Kind of, and you guys can see this pot over here, like that, and it will sit like that until it's ready to trim. So that's the bottom. So let's go ahead, we're gonna pull one more pull up. And I went a little fast and I slightly threw it off center. So you'll see that happen in your own studio, you'll do that, but you know what? You can work through it. Get that rest of that water out of there. So let's work on the sides. I'm gonna grab rib here. So this is a Dirty Girls rib and I'm going to use that and I'm just gently going to push out and you can see the swelling as I push up. And I slow the wheel down as I get closer to the top. The wider, the slower you need to go. So we have a basic bowl shape here. It needs a lot more refining. So let's work through it. You can see how slow I'm going. I'm not rushing it. Stretching the clay from the inside and the rib on the outside is just supporting the wall and keeping my fingers from going a little too far. How much clay is that? This was three and a half pounds for this particular bowl. So now I wanna go in and I like to throw down the wall on the inside. And I'm just gonna take my rib on the inside right near where the side wall meets the bottom. And I'm just gonna go in and make sure that curve is nice and smooth. A nice smooth transition, no lumps or bumps. We want a smooth transition on our curve. So we just go in and we throw down and then in towards the center. And once that's done, now we're gonna go ahead and shape. So we have a tall bowl. You could stop here if you wanted a tall, narrow bowl, but we wanna add more width to it. So we are gonna put some water on this and we're gonna stretch the clay. I'm gonna stretch it out. And I'm just gonna use a red rib now. I switch to this. 
and I lean over to the side to throw because I can't see the side unless I do this. So I don't, I hope I'm not in the way of the camera, but you can kind of see that I'm definitely leaning over. And this is more of a fruit bowl shape. And I can see I've added so much water. What happens is the clay can only absorb so much water before it starts to break down. And B-Mix, being porcelainous, it will do what porcelain does, which is break down easier than stoneware. So it reaches its saturation point. So you gotta kinda be quick with it. So there's our wall. And now I'm gonna flip my rim. So this goes pretty fast. Just keep watching. going slow. I'm just going to pull the rim out and compress. Like that. That's pretty much it. There's a ton of clay at the bottom because I made a huge foot. Uh, it's okay, I'm gonna leave that foot there because I will trim it up and I'll have a really tall, almost a pedestal base, and that'll make a more elegant bowl. So if I wanted something a little more like a mashed potatoes everyday bowl, I would have made the bottom a little wider and thinner. I wouldn't have made it so thick because I wouldn't trim as much off. We would trim just a little bit. So this needs to set now. So let's cut this off. This is the point where you lose your round bottom. So does it collapse on you? What you can do actually is if you find your clay becomes oversaturated, you can set this aside. Just set the whole bat and everything aside. Let it sit up for 30 or so minutes, maybe an hour, and then you can come back and work it some more. A lot of people who do big pieces on the wheel with porcelain, that's what they will do. They will actually set their piece to the side and they will let it stiffen up a bit. Some people use a blowtorch or a heat gun to help them, but others will just set it to the side and let it stiffen up on its own. And then you come back to it and it has uh, lost some of the moisture and it will retain the wall. So there's the shape. Do you see that big giant foot? We're gonna trim all that away to make a cute pedestal base. So it's a little more decorative the bowl, than the bowl I showed at the beginning. So now I gotta pass this off. Hey, you wanna come grab a bowl? <laughs> I'm I need a, the magic. Here goes the bowl. <laughs> Bye bowl. Just sit it on my work table, that's fine. <laughs> so I've got another bat here because we're gonna do a stack bowl. Some people use a heat gun, yeah, you, and you can if it helps you. That was three and a half pounds on that one. We're gonna use, two three and a half pound balls now and make a stacked bowl. So this is how I make sinks. Some of you might have seen my video I put up this morning. I was making a sink. I don't make sinks for sale. I don't make sinks for, I, I don't, sinks are very stressful for me. I'm so worried about them the whole time I'm making them. Um, and you need about 12 to 15 pounds of clay depending on how big of a sink you wanna make. But my aunt is building a new house and she asked me to make her sink, so I agreed to make her sink. And I will make a couple more because I'm gonna teach a class on it eventually, but uh, I don't make sinks. I just don't, uh, it's so not, not a thrown sink. Hand-built sink this is a different thing, but wheel thrown, not so much. All right, so I have two three and a half pound balls of clay, so we're gonna start with each one. Why a thick bat, bat versus skinny? So the other bat was a skinnier bat that I was using. This is a thicker one. This is called the Hydra, H-Y-D-R-A bat. And I got this from High Water Clays. I have been using these for about 16 years. This bat actually for 16 years, it's that old. And they're very thick, they don't warp, and I love them. The thinner bat I had earlier, they will warp as they're drying. They're okay, they're, they're fine, but they're, they're not as good as these. They're not. All right, so we're gonna smack this on center. Like 
we did before. The last one looks more like a punch bowl, like a little mini punch bowl, right? So go ahead and center the first three and a half pounds. You can hear my wheel go up in pitch as I go faster. Teresa over on Clay's chair just told, just told us that uh, she's placing an order for a Bailey Pro XL today. Tell them that you saw it here. Tell, you know, tell them where you, where you found it because I've been wanting Bailey to come on board and offer a deal for our members. I've been trying to get them to come on board and they always come back to me. They're a great company, but they always come back with, we do sales, weekly sales, so just tell your members to watch that. But I would love for them to offer a sponsor code or a deal so that we could always get a discount. All right, first three and a half pounds right here. Now we're gonna do the second. If three and a half pounds is more than you can center, then cut this down to two pounds. If you can center two pounds easily, get two two pound balls. Some, and then you would have a four pound bowl. You don't have to try to throw too much. So I'm gonna do two three and a half pound balls. When I do sinks, I do three. three well, I usually go to 12 pounds. So I usually do three four pound balls. But sometimes I do three four and a half pound balls for sinks, so bigger. The most I like to throw um, like as a ball of clay is five pounds. And even that can be hard on your hands. So don't, don't feel like you need to be able to throw a lot of clay at one time. So someone asked, uh, like a bathroom sink? How big would that be? Yeah, a bathroom sink. Yes, exactly. And so usually you throw them to uh, 18 to 20 inches, depending on the customer's request. So my aunt wanted a specific size. So hers is 18 inches wide before it dries. And then it will dry down it to like 16, I think, which is what she needs. But these are bathroom sinks that are elegant and beautiful in their artwork, not just functional. Because it's gonna be, you know, glazed and she's going to pick out custom the glaze and everything. All right, so I have my ball of clay and you notice my, my bottom's rounded. Need a nice rounded bottom and I'm just going to smack it on. Kind of like building a snowman, right? It's a, it's a clay man and you're going to smack it on just like we did before. So that gives us seven pounds of clay. That's, that's good, that's, that's a good bit of clay. And so I'm gonna center mostly concentrating on the piece I just stuck on. It will have knocked the other piece sometimes off center. So you just work it and then compress. I'm in a chair that has wheels, which I would have switched if I had thought about this, because as I'm pushing, my chair is trying to get away from me. But usually when I throw smaller things, I can use my, my wheelie chair. I need locks on my wheels. If you want a wide bottom, yes. We're not making a sink today. If I was making the sink, I would have a wider bottom. We're making a just regular, maybe fruit bowl. We'll, we'll see where we go. But you will notice as I compress down, the bottom gets wider. And compress out. And I have knocked my bottom bit of clay off center, do you see? So we're just gonna work that back in. And if you wanted to make a great big wide bottom, like a shallow, not very deep, but really wide bottom bowl, you would definitely start with a wider base. So this is looking pretty good. We're still going to go for that cake shape.
there. So we have seven pounds of clay on there. Wanting to make a sink. <laughs> well, we'll get it done. We'll get a class up. My aunt's house is going to be done, I think, in May. So I'll have the sink finished for her before then. It's drying it right now. And um, after it's done, I will, I'll, I'll, make, I'll make some others. All right, so let's open this up. Same way as we did before. Find the center. Except we're going to do it in smaller bites. So we'll open up a portion of this. And you want plenty of water. And then we're going to go down in. And actually, I always end up pulling out a chunk as I do this. And another chunk as I go down in. So I've opened it up. I'm leaving a good half inch on the bottom here. You don't want your bottoms to be too thin on bigger bowls. I should film cleanup time. <laughs> so now we're just going to pull out. And up a little bit. So I made that nice little curve we have in there. And I want to thank you all, you know, for spending the last few days with me and hanging out and, you know, being part of my ClayShare family, part of our clay community. Everybody who's watching on ClayShare.com, on YouTube, on Vimeo, on Facebook, and those of you hanging out with us on Instagram. Just compressing that bottom. So I'm going to open up a little more. Come out a little bit more. I am going to support the wall as I do it. And then I'm going to start to pull up. So I'm just moving that clay upwards. More water. And let's go up a bit more. And I'm not going to fight this. I'm going to let it start to flare out. We're just going to let it grow. How do you measure it when it shrinks, the drain and such? So you need to know your clay's shrinkage if you're making a, a sink. I know mine shrinks 12%. So I know what she's using for a drain. It's a standard size in plumbing. So you just measure that and make sure you make it big enough before it shrinks so that it will fit. I'll give you a little tip. If you make a two inch hole when it's wet, and you're using B-Mix, which shrinks 12%, you should be good. If you have a clay that shrinks 12%. So before I do too much more on my walls, I want to go in and smooth out the bottom. So I'm going to use this rib, and I'm going to help put my little bit of a curve in. So I'm just going to let that ride along and compress and smooth the bottom with that. There we go. I'll go back in later with the red rib to finish it and finalize that, but that's it for now. All right, I think we're going to pull up one more. One more pull. <laughs> I see someone says that they love that I pull with a sponge, and they do that too, but we're told that's not a good way to throw. Well, I have to tell you, I've been throwing for over 20 years this way, and so far it's not really holding me back. <laughs> so I think if you throw with a sponge or not, it's up to you. I, it's just my habit. I like a lot of water when I throw. So for me, throwing with the sponge just makes a lot of sense. So see how I really slowed the wheel down? Just take your time. Be patient. Work the bowl. I'm getting my height right now. So I'm going to pull it up as many times as I want to get my height. And then we'll start pulling it outwards. Right, yes, we have to do the things that work for us. You know, don't let anybody tell you ever in anything 
that you're doing something wrong. If it works for you, you just keep doing it. They'll let them do their thing their way. I've got a question for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, it says, how thick do you leave the rim to start stretching out? Uh, so I like to keep it pretty thick on the top, a little thicker than the side walls. But you'll notice I kept the whole thing fairly thick as I was pulling up. There's not a measurement. It's all in relation to how big of a bowl you're making and how thick you're going to go. I would say this is definitely half an inch. It's a little thinner now, but it was a half an inch when I was working on it. And um, for me, that was working well. So now I'm going to gently start to shape. And I'm actually going to, where is my, <laughs> so I have my tool cart next to me. I can just reach over and grab it. This is my favorite rib <laughs> right here. So I'm going to slowly start to shape. And the rib is riding around the outside. I'm still going fairly slow, and I'm just pressing out from the inside and letting the bowl grow. And what I like about switching to the rib here is the sponge will keep putting water into it. The rib scrapes the slip and water off the surface. So go back down to the bottom and we're going to stretch it out a little more. It's always best to make big bowls just like you would eat an elephant with small bites. So small movements, stretching it a little bit at a time. Don't try to move too much clay at once and just go with it. Don't speed your wheel up. I have a habit of trying to go too fast. So we have a nice straight-sided bowl. Um, this is actually the shape bowl that I use in the house for mashed potatoes because <laughs> it'll keep a big batch of potatoes. My, my family likes mashed potatoes, um, especially my eldest daughter. It's like her favorite food. But I will keep a bowl like this in the house because it's taller. Eh, it's tall and it's wide, but it's not a wide, shallow bowl, so it really keeps the heat in. So we're going to keep going. Keep stretching it just a little bit more. And I'll have to add a little water to it. If it gets dry, your fingers are going to snag. But you notice how I'm mopping up the water that's right down in there. I don't really want that sitting there. All right, just keep mindful of the speed here. That's what I have to do. And let's press out. And we're getting close to the finished shape that I have in mind. This is the most relaxing part of throwing. You go very slow, tiny little movements, slow your breathing with it, and it's almost like meditating. Let's pull another one. Which red rib is this? This one, let me see if I can see the number. This one is I think I'm using the one. Yes, this is the one. I do use different size ribs. I have the little one, which I think is a zero, and I like to use that for smaller things and for finish work. And the one is my favorite for just throwing in general. Now, we get to this point, we have to decide what kind of rim do you want? I'm thinking, if I press this, I'm going to flare it out a bit, so I'm going to turn my rib around, and I'm just going to let the clay ride around this rib like this. I'm just slowly bending the clay over the red rib, and I'm sorry if the folks on Instagram can't see. I think you guys can see it though, right, everybody else? I'm pressing the rim as I wrap it over. And I'm going to go down and I'm just going to finish 
the inside here where the wall meets the floor. So we don't have any lumps or bumps down there. We have just a nice smooth curve. Get that down there. There. So I don't know if you can see that curve I have in there, that gentle curve. And now I'm just going to use my sponge to compress this rim and smooth it. And I think that might be a bowl. This might do it. It's a really nice shape. It's very elegant, very classic. Could be a sink if it was bigger. It's not big enough for a sink at this point, but it could be if we made it larger. So I'm going to take a little bit of clay. Do you see there's quite a bit of clay on the bottom? But I'm not going to worry about taking all that away now. I'm going to trim that off because if you take too much away, that's actually helping to support the side walls. It did turn out like a sweet bowl, didn't it? I'm just going to take a little more clay off. And then check in the profile. It's pretty good. I could get nitpicky with it and fiddle with it a little bit more. Um, you know, this is, <laughs> right, this is the artist doesn't know when to stop. Maybe a little more belly right here, just a tiny, tiny bit more, just a tiny, just a yiddo. Yeah, that's good right there. There. Okay, going to leave it. What about using a chamois on the lip? Certainly, if you have a chamois, you can wrap it around. My, my chamois disappeared a long time ago. <laughs> and so, I've just been compressing with my sponge. You can use your fingers to compress. You can also use the webbing in between your fingers, which is a nice built-in chamois, right? This will do a good job of actually that webbing there of compressing and smoothing those sides. So I think that's good. Let's, before I cut it, I'm gonna remove some excess water from the wheel head, from the bat, because I don't wanna drag that wetness under. So let's go ahead and cut this off. I'm just gonna hold my wire straight down and pull. And there's a bowl. Yay, so we're gonna, we have time. Yes, we do. I wanna trim a bowl, because I said I would. <laughs> and I have a Bailey Quick Trim. We're giving one away today. So I, I think we'll use the Bailey Quick Trim to trim it. <laughs> Stop. Step away, right? That's the, that's the point. So there you can see that bowl. So we're going to put it here. And hopefully I won't bump it with my hand while I'm trimming, right? Hopefully I won't damage the bowl. Um, we're going to try not to. So I have a Bailey Quick Trim. We're giving one away. I usually don't use these. I usually just use wads of clay. Oh, that was, a, that rhymed. It was nice. <laughs> but today for you all, and it does have clay on it. I have used it. Um, I will trim with this. Now I have found that for me, uh, just trimming old school comes naturally. And I just do that because that's what is easiest for me. Oh, do you guys want to know how big that bowl was? Um, it is 12 inches and hold on, going this way, 12 inches by seven. So the bowl was 12 by seven. I know somebody's going to want to know how big it was. So it's actually not that big. It's really not. So we're going to line this up and try to get it lined up first. And then let's spin it, and you can feel where your bowl. So, oh wait, before I do that, let me show you something. Is there a blooper reel from this week? <laughs> no, but we should. So it's all happened live. It's all happened live, exactly. So I'm gonna mark here. This mark is how far I want to trim into, and my next mark is here. And that's how far down I want to trim my foot on the inside. So I made those two marks. So those are my registration marks that I will use to trim this bowl. 
And people always ask, how do you know what to trim it to? And I'll do that before. So the big bowl was seven pounds. This little guy is a three pound bowl. So this is a smaller, maybe two and three quarters. This is a smaller bowl, this little one here. But we can look at the shape. You know, it's just a cute little. This is actually based on a shape I used to make a lot when I was doing production pottery. I called it my um, Buddhist begging bowl. Those of you who know about uh, Buddhist monks and they have a begging bowl they carry with them, this shape is based on that bowl. And I used to, uh, make these like crazy. Now I only make them once in a while, but they still are a very nice shape. So we're just gonna put this on. We haven't locked it down. We're just gonna let it spin. Get it centered. So now you take your little holders here and you're just gonna scooch them up to it. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And you're gonna do the two at a time right here, these two. And then tighten them down. And then you'll do the next two. And then tighten them down. If you, if you see light, you've trimmed too far, right? Exactly. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna use this Dirty Girls. Ooh, I love it when they do this. I love the ribbons, ribbons of clay. So I'm just gonna come in pretty aggressively with the trimming tool. Now I'm going to mark out my foot. So this is the foot right here. And then I'm just going to trim the bowl. You always thought the tool centered and secured the pieces. Um, if it does, I haven't figured that part out <laughs> in all that I've been using it. <laughs> so I'm going to switch back uh, to my little Dolan tool. It's just one of their ribbon trimming tools. This is one of my favorite tools. Um, it's just a simple triangle sort of shape loop tool. And I've been using this one for years and years. So it's like my old friend and it's always my go-to and it's not a great big tool. It's just a simple little tool. But I just like the way it feels. It fits my hand. Is that your Dolan? This is my Dolan. And this particular one they don't make anymore. This was a special edition, this model. Um, I've talked to Dolan about having them do a new version. Well, just doing this one again. And I think they will. We just have to get, we just have to get together and make that happen. So that'll be where the bottom starts, right here. Now, you could trim this just like I did earlier using my wads of clay on my bat. A griffin grip, a giffin grip will. Huh. Am I gonna do this every day while you're in quarantine? I don't know if I would have the energy to do it every day. It's a lot of work to make this happen, but I will tell you I am going to be doing at least a twice week check-in with everybody. So I'll be doing my Wednesday live at five. And then I'm also gonna do like a self-care Sunday. Usually every Sunday at noon, if I don't have a kiln opening or anything, we'll still check in and I'll share what's going on in the studio. And I might come in a few other times too. If I'm working on something and I'm just sitting at the wheel working, I'm more than willing to do a live broadcast. It might not be everywhere like it is right now. It might only be in a couple places um, because we are streaming to five different platforms, which is a little crazy, but. A little crazy. So I'm just doing this decorative detail to this foot right here. 
using this circle trimmer. It is, uh, let me see, I'll clean it off. Y'all want the number? Just in case. Let's see. Dolan tools. It does not say. So it's a little uh, circle. I would say it's a half inch round. I'd guess that's a half inch round circle is what I'm using to make my little um, concave area there. I'm just going to take a tiny bit more off here. Now we're going to go do the foot. So I always start the outside and put in my ring. So this is the foot ring. And then I go remove the center. So I always do this part first and then go to the center. A jazz cam in the studio without sound, Paul says. Uh, just like watching Eagle's Nest, we can watch the potter in her environment. <laughs> so it could be... Uh, you know, what's Jess doing today? Let's take a look at the live cam. I actually thought about putting a live cam up to my chicken coop so I could watch my chickens, but, um... <laughs> oh, the eagles didn't have any eggies. Oh, that is sad. Well, they had eggs, but none of them hatched. They didn't have babies. I didn't watch the eagle cam. The last baby cam I watched was the giraffe a few years ago that was having a baby. Um, April the Giraffe, I think was her name. And I watched that whole thing. <laughs> I think we all watched the giraffe. <laughs> so to enter our giveaways, you just sign up for my emails and you can do that on claysharecon.com, but always on claysharecon.com because I do giveaways every month. It's not just for, for claysharecon, we went a little above and beyond and did 86 prizes crazy. Um, but normally I will give away something every month. And the next giveaway we have is going to be these aprons that I'm wearing right now. And those are going to be April's giveaway in the month of April. So you can win a potter's apron. So I pretty much trimmed it out to maybe a little more. And I'm going to clean this up here. And now we'll smooth the bottom. <laughs> you watch the giraffe too. <laughs> I think a lot of us watch the giraffe. So I want to make sure I round over these edges. So the inside and outside of the foot, I want to round that over. And this edge here, you don't want any sharp edges. A bowl like this I probably will carve, uh, do Mishima or Scrafito on, one or the other, depending on um, how I'm feeling. just depends. You've already signed up, so you can win exactly. And today we are giving away 10 Mako Glaze Kits, the 2019 Glaze Kit. We're giving away four prize packages from Dirty Girls, so they've got a bunch of things they've put up. We have two of the Space Saver Bat Systems from Studio Pro Bats. And we have this Giffen Grip, but uh, not this Giffen Grip, this Bailey Quick Trim. There's a huge difference between the two. And not this one, a brand new one. This one is the one I'm using in the studio. So I'm just going to compress, finish this off. And now we'll flip it over. Loosen these up. And then, voila, the bowl. There's the bottom. <laughs> so there we have it. We made two bowls <laughs> right here. This, this one we trimmed, we didn't make this one. So the, the finishing work for this, what would I, other, the other thing I would do, I just wipe the edge, just wipe the rims and that's it. So I think we're gonna switch back to our full view. And just smooth this off. Smooth out any bumps or crumbs of clay or areas where you might have um, 
you know, put your nail in it or maybe the trimming, trimming tool gouged it or something. But just, just clean it up. So there we have it. Got this cute, cute little bottomed bowl. And then we also threw this seven pound one and then my little three and a half pound one that's hanging out down there but it, we don't need to grab that so that's what we did during this live throwing a bowl all right so how do i trim a bowl that's larger than the bat that's a really good question so i have a bigger bat that's so you have to buy i have um yeah you want to grab me a bat we could get that one if we want to get real serious kevin's getting my heavy duty bat so, I have, it's all car, 24 inch bat right here. This is, I can throw up to a 24 inch rim bowl. Here's my 24 inch rim bat. This is homemade. I did not make it. It was made by a um, gentleman in North Carolina whose wife was a potter. She passed away. I actually bought my first kiln and wheel from them ages ago and he gave me this bat. So that's what I use for trimming big things. And I have a 20 inch and an 18 inch and a 16 inch and so on. So with this wheel, because it is a self-contained splash pan, what you do is you get, Kev, you know where my Bailey adapter is? From Bailey Pottery, they sell a wheel adapter. It's round and thick bat, has all the little uh, screws in it there. It's somewhere over there. Be careful of the sink. That's what you have right by you. Uh, that back thing there, that would be great. Yeah, that's it. So this is a bat adapter. You don't remove the splash pan. No. So what have you made on a 24 inch bat? I have made shallow plates, like um, serving plates you make on a 24 inch bat. And I'll do a class, I'll show you how to do those. So this right here attaches to my wheel. I'll show you. Hold on. I'll show you. I got it. All right, let me clean that off. This attaches to your wheel. This is for those of you that have the Bailey Pro line of wheels. Bat pins drilled 10 inch on center. Just wiggle till you find it. And then, hmm? And then you attach your bat to this, and then you trim on this. So this right here is, um, gotta line it up. I always struggle with the lining up. And then you put your bowl on, you trim on this. And yeah, your trimmings will go kind of everywhere, but here's the thing. Any other wheel you use out there, any other, any other wheel, um, the trimmings are gonna go everywhere on a big bat too. They are, just because there's no wheel out there that can, that has a splash pan that will catch this, right? So um, you use this and then you put your, hold on, I'll get it. This isn't my bat that I would trim on, but then you put the bat you're gonna trim on on it, right? You put that on and then you put your big bowl on and you trim on that. So that's what you would do. That's it, all right. So what, <laughs> I love that people wanna know, what have you made on the 24 inch bat? I made uh, giant bowls. Well, we have a smaller one. You wanna grab something else for me? I'll show you. This is a small one, but I do bigger versions with handles. I should say I used to when I was doing production pottery. A lot of things I used to make, I don't have time to make anymore because I'm very busy running clay share and teaching. So um, this, never mind the ultra, I'm cleaning it out. It's so dirty. How'd this get so dirty? All right, so this right here, this great big dish right here, which after being fired and dried, it's not that big. It's only, I would say 12, this one's only about 14 inches, 15 inches wide, this one here. But the way I make these, I can make them as big as I want. I can make it 36 inches if it would fit in my kiln, which uh, won't fit in my gas kiln. It won't fit. So sad face for that. <laughs> so it could get messy if you throw with a lot of water. It could get messy if you throw with a lot of water, right? But that's part of it. It's a pottery studio. It's supposed to get messy. And if you want to throw really big things, what else do you do? Like um, any other wheel out there when you're throwing big, nobody has a bat pan that will catch your water if you're throwing on a 24 inch bat. It's just nobody does it. So you just make a mess. 
and you mop it up when you're done. It's okay. just clay. I have a question about the Bailey wheels real quick. Sure. So just looked at the Bailey wheels, but with the pan attached and the hole in the bottom, do you have to have it over a drain? You put a bucket under it. I have a bucket under the hole. That's all. <laughs> Yeah, you just put a bucket under your wheel to catch the water that flows down the drain in the Bailey wheel. And Tana says that's why she calls her shop the mud shop because she gets clay and mud everywhere. And I will do a class on these. It's, uh, it can go on the class board, which is full right now, but as soon as I film a class, one will get erased and another can get pushed up. And I think my, I'm up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16 classes in either pre-production, production, or post right now. So all those classes are in process. So that's 16 weeks of classes already like in, uh, down the pipe here. So this will get put on the list. I'll put it on there for you guys. We'll make one of these. All right. So... Um, you would want a hole for a bucket in the wheel and we have one this wheel actually has a hole in it for a bucket to go underneath super easy we oui. I see people say you speak French yes I said yes I said we oui instead of yes because I saw someone say that and so immediately switch to French and start answering in French um, all right so uh, what time is it it's it's 3 30 what is it 3 30 got three minutes we got three minutes give me your questions Move your wheel outside. Exactly. And then you can make a big old mess. And Norma says they created a bat pan out of cardboard for trimming. Right? Cardboard box. Make a big pan to catch. You could totally do that. Make your own. Catch your trimmings. Or clean them up if you don't want to make one. It's perfectly fine. Right? So I'm just trying to read everybody. My gas kiln, which do I prefer glazing results from your gas kiln or your electric kiln? Uh, there's such different things between your gas and your electric kiln. And I will be doing some gas kiln classes later this summer. I'll be um, making pieces for my gas kiln. Now I fire my gas kiln to cone 10. My electric kiln, I only fire to cone 5. So there's completely different things going on in those kilns. The gas kiln is a redu reduction atmosphere, so you get different effects on the surfaces than you get in an electric kiln. I won't say one's better than the other, they're just different. It's like, do you like pistachio ice cream or maple walnut? Both are really good, but they're very different from each other, although they all have nuts, right? So do I order my clay wetter? I do not, it just comes that way. My supplier just has it and I just use it. There was a time where when I was getting it, I would ask for it to be a little wetter, but now it just is wetter. So back years ago, uh, I think they used to have it drier. I think they reformulated how wet bee mix is. And now I just get it the standard what it comes and it works really well. I like my clay a little softer. Everybody likes their clay a little different, so. Uh, so Diane is waiting to open her kiln. And how do I keep track of different cone clays? I have them all labeled in my studio. And when I have them drying and through the process, the shelves have labels on them. So I know what's on it. And I only put things on that shelf that will say, you know, cone five, cone 10, or low fire. So those are the three different ranges I have in the studio. And so you only put the low fire pieces there and the actual storage of the clay itself, the, they're labeled so I know exactly what it goes to. So it's not an issue for that. Do I ever form my bowls with a rib from the inside? Sometimes I will use two ribs when I'm throwing. Yeah, it just depends. Once in a while, why not try it? Give it a try. If you haven't done that yet, you use two ribs. You have one rib on the, out, on the inside and another rib on the outside. And as you are throwing, you use both the ribs. It smooths it out really well, scrapes up all the slip. It's a great way to throw. So if you want a little fun thing to challenge, if you're getting bored with throwing, then try that. I got to say goodbye to everybody on Instagram because the broadcast is about to go off on Instagram. We, and, and it's about time for us. Anybody else have any last minute? Uh, I want to see if there's any last minute questions. A new brown clay you tried. It's very sticky and easy to rip when handling. So are you throwing with it, Jenny, or are you hand building with it? It's very sticky. Yeah, sticky, sometimes the dark clays are sticky, 
and you just got to work with it like you'd work with a porcelain. Don't get it too wet. Don't overwork it. Don't oversaturate it with water. And if you are throwing, if you want to throw a bigger piece, like I had mentioned, you throw a little bit and then maybe you set it to the side and let it dry out a little bit and then you come back to it and throw some more and that will help with it, hopefully. Big round wood ribs are fun. I've got, I've got, I've got one of these guys to play with. Dirty Girls sent me. Um, I've got a, quite a few of their things I'm going to be throwing with lately and in the future and we'll see. Just slab work. So if, what I would do is roll your slab out, Jenny. Let it set a little bit so it's not so sticky because it sounds to me like your clay is way too wet to work with. And just let it set out for 20 or 30 minutes, keeping an eye on it so it doesn't dry out too much. But then you can go back and work with it when it's dried out a little bit. You don't want it sticky and tearing. You want it to firm up just a little bit, but not start drying. You just don't want it to be as sticky. And it sounds to me like you've used clays other than the brown clay so you know how other clays should feel and the moisture level you're looking for. So wait till your brown clay gets to that level and use it then, and that should help. All right, so we will be back at four. Let's see if we got anything else. I just wanna make sure I'm all caught up. And I see someone has, do I have a pug mill? I do, it does, I've never used it. A friend of mine was getting rid of it and they said last summer if I wanted it, I could have it. I went and picked it up and have yet to use it. To use it. Um, maybe, maybe some point I'll figure that. I just mix it and wedge by hand. All right, so we are gonna do the clay share giveaway day four after this. We are giving away the Mako glazes, this Bailey Quick trim that I put over there, the Studio Pro Bat Space Saver System, and four prizes from Dirty Girls. So come back at four, that's just in a little under a half an hour, and we will announce the winners of those prizes. If you wanna know how to enter or find out more about this five-day event, go to claysharecon.com. Remember, this is day four. So we still got tomorrow, and it's a glaze extravaganza. I'll be glazing with Amico and Clayscapes glazes in two separate demos. I'll be doing a class on brushing on Amico and then dipping and pouring with Clayscapes. All right, everyone, I will catch you all at four o'clock for the giveaway, and I'll see everybody tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow at noon. Might be morning for you if you're just getting up, but tomorrow at noon Eastern. Bye, everyone.